What is up guys, it's Headsets Modern Warfare here, Gamertab Banter Chicken, and welcome back to another Apparition Net video. So in this video I'm going to be basically going over um, the R65 version of Apparition Net. I'm going to re-go over the whole installation and updating process because you cannot update, you cannot update to R65 in the normal way of using the updater. Uh, you just can't. There's no real way we could have successfully done that uh, because we've actually switched servers. Um, because I mean we had two days of downtime on the old server because the web host company we were using just completely screwed us over and were refusing to accept responsibility for it or fix it because it was at their end so we switched over to a server we have more control of and it's faster and everything's basically better for us now uh, but because of that server switch we can't use the old updater to update to the new server so we've got a different way of installing this new update so I'm going to re go over the installation process I'm also going to go over um, a couple of things you know that people were uh, wanting from us to make things easier and show show you guys a few of the the changes and updates that we've made to the program since my last video uh, like this which I think was the R39 overview or something like that so let's jump straight into it. So if you want the update to update from R64 or an older version to the new update, you need to go to apparitionnet.co.uk, not .com. We've had to, we, you know, we've switched from the old server, so we're now .co.uk. So apparitionnet.co.uk forward slash user CP. I'll put the link in the description. Um, what you want to do is sign into your user account. This is not the account that you use on the forms. This is your account that you use to sign in to Apparition Net, the actual program. So log in with your username and password. And once you get open, you have your CPU key. You can actually update your CPU key once, which will, uh, which is one thing that people have been requesting for quite some time is being able to change their CPU keys. We can't allow people to change their CPU keys all the time because then they could share accounts, you know, and that's not allowed basically so uh, but yeah we have allowed people now to update their CPU key uh, if they have, get a new console or something like that if you've already used your one-time change you can contact us about it and we'll try and figure something out uh, so when you log in here there's a new option to download the latest version if you click this it will download uh, apparition net the new installer so click that and it will download a new installer uh, which is which I have right here. So once you've downloaded the new installer, just go ahead and open it up. The plugins, all the plugins you need will be in here. You've got your XPDM, RPC. If you already have XRPC, that will do fine. You don't need to replace XRPC with RPC or have RPC and XRPC at, uh, running at the same time. Just one or the other will do fine, but you do need our JRPC because it is the 61 kilobyte version and if you have a 44 kilobyte version of JRPC, it's not gonna work. JRPC 2 also we do not use, so please do not try and use JRPC and JRPC 2 at the same time, because that can cause conflicts as well. Um, also a readme, but we'll be kind of going through everything that's in the readme anyway. Uh, so we've got R65 setup. What you're gonna do is simply run the setup, click next, um, try and install it to the default location if you can, It'll just minimize problems. Uh, we can create our desktop icons and let it install. Uh, we can launch once we're finished and we'll have our icon on the desktop here. We've also got this app net fixer which I'll go over in just a sec. Or I'll go over later actually once we've gone over uh, the new changes in Apparition Net. So you'll get this um, processing startup procedures uh, which just lets you know the tool is loading and once it has loaded up you can go ahead and log in now if you don't have an account I will show you what it's like setting up an account real quick okay guys so what I've gone and done is I've just removed my license right now so I can show you what it's like if you've just if you're just getting the uh, tool for from the beginning uh, we currently don't have the purchase page back up so you know if you're wondering if you want to buy or something like that you'll just currently, hopefully this is temporary, you'll just have to contact the uh, Apparition Net on AIM if you're wanting to buy it, uh, the software. So when you open it for the first time and you've not had AppNet before, you will get this message saying activation, activation needed. Click OK. Uh, you can click on File 
and you can go down to licensing and in licensing it will ask you to enter a product key now if you've bought uh, through the automatic system then you will get an email that has your product key and the download link and everything in there if you've bought from us on aim then we will send you that information so you'll have a product key that we'll send you and what you want to do is enter it in here so here we go it's a product key and when you enter the product key in full, you will be prompted to enter a username, password, and CPU key. So this is the information you will, from now on, use to sign into the tool. So I'm just going to re-put in my username and password. And for CPU key, uh, now this is another thing that people were going on about us for ages. So many people at one point were entering wrong CPU keys or not even entering a CPU key and then we had to deal with that and it was really annoying to try and deal with back with when we had our old system set up we couldn't really change CPU keys and it was it was a, becoming a bit of a nightmare so really I don't think there's any excuse for people entering the wrong CPU keys anymore because if you try and activate without a CPU key it will tell you that you have not entered a CPU key um, CPU keys are always in hex, which is uh, 0 to 9, um, and A to F. So those are the only characters that should be in a CPU key. So if you enter an invalid character like J, it will tell you an invalid character has been entered, O, something like that, invalid. Um, so you, can, you can't really enter a wrong CPU key, and it will, it will make you... You know, lower, lowercase was another problem, people entering lowercase letters in a CPU key. CPU keys are always uppercase, so if you enter any lowercase digits, it will put them into uppercase for you. A CPU key is also 32 characters long, so it will only let, let you enter 32 characters. Um, so, also you can retrieve CPU key from console, so if you have the console switched on, you have to have the plugins on there, you have to have neighborhood connected so you have to have your uh, console connected through neighborhood all right there we go so I have my uh, console added in neighborhood remember you also need your RPC or XRPC your JRPC uh, XPDM well tch, neighborhood wouldn't connect if you didn't have XPDM anyway uh, so when you have that set up you will be able to click grab CPU key and it will grab the CPU key off the console and paste it into the CPU key box so that you know that it is 100% correct. If you can't get this working, if you click retrieve CPU key and it freezes and it's just frozen, then your console is not able to connect to the console because either JRPC or one of your plugins isn't set right or your IP's changed on your console or something like that, in which case just type the CPU key in which I'd never really recommend, but we have added those extra sort of guidelines, if you will, into this box so that you can't enter invalid stuff. Well, you could also just paste in your CPU key as well if you have it saved in a text document. Once you have that information, you can click unlock. It will say activation was successful. Remember, these keys are a one-time use key. So if you've already activated and for some reason you need another, you need reactivated again, then you need to contact us because you're this is a one-time use key. This key can never be used again now that I have activated it. I see a lot of people trying their keys multiple times and it's just not gonna work. So once you've activated, uh, the software will restart. And once it has restarted here, uh, you can go ahead and you'll see that it has now opened up to enter your username and password, which you can enter here. So I'll enter the account information I created. You can enable auto login so you don't have to log in each time. Connect it to the console if you have, you know, neighborhood hooked up and all your plugins set up. And just give it a few seconds to establish all that. You probably get not responding for a second. There you go. And that's it now. So what we can do, we've got all the we've got our console our we've got our Call of Duty series options here. Uh, we've got other games, we've got Halo 3, Halo 4, all of our arcade games, console tools. So, one other thing that we have changed since the last uh, 
the last one I did, last video on this, is the file. If you click file now, we've got a bunch of different options. So we can reboot console, shut down console, test connectivity, uh, news and updates. So we add these little notices now and again so that can show you, show you what's going on with the tool. It can point out that if there are any bugs that we know about them and that we're fixing them and up, uh, information about new updates etc. Uh, licensing will just tell you if you are licensed. If you weren't it will ask you to enter a product key like it did before. Uh, shop, we are part, we've partnered up with a couple of uh, KV sellers um, so we have a little shop so if you ever want to buy a KV you can buy them from one of these guys you just click purchase and it will if you have AIM installed it will automatically open AIM and uh, message one of these guys with uh, with a message basically saying that you would like to buy a KV uh, if you don't have AIM these buttons won't do anything so you need to have uh, AOL's instant messenger installed which is AIM uh, restart the software visit the appnet forums or whatever so that's what we have in file and also we've got manage account now which is the panel that I showed you guys a little bit earlier for downloading the latest installer so you can access it from in here by clicking manage and it will open the customer panel to which you can add your username and your password the same username you used to username and password you use up here and you log in And once you have logged in, you can do things like enter an email address. This is quite handy if you do bother to do this and actually enter a email address or an AIM username. It can help us help you, essentially. So if you come to us with any problems, it's easier for us to identify you if you put in your, your email address in here. Um, also your CPU key, like I said, you can update your CPU key if you've got a new console. You can also update your account password if you've, uh, I don't know, if you want to change your password for whatever reason, you can do that as well. And that is basically it. A couple of other things we've done, uh, we've added some changes to the Advanced Warfare tool since my last video. Do we even have the Advanced Warfare tool in my last video? I don't know. Uh, we've added force host. A lot of people don't know how to use this uh, because it's not like maybe most of the other force hosts, I guess. Uh, you actually just have to be in the in the menu. You don't actually search for a game. You just click it in the menu and it will force host for you. Um, what else have we done? We've added a character editor. This wasn't in my last video, I believe. So you can edit your character's eyewear, helmet, top, loadout, character, uh, knee guard, pants, gloves. Uh, you've also some presets, so if you select your character slot 1 and then you can add the zombie outfit or the grandmaster outfit, bloodshed or weapons master to your character and all that good stuff. And the account stats, we've also got supply drops um, added as well, I believe is new since the last video I made on this. And yeah, we've got our all of our usual stuff in here, we've got our uh, game mods. Uh, extras, off host mods, uh, change your name or change your XUID, spoof your XUID, save and load stat file, all of that good stuff. So that is basically everything that we have currently got in the uh, da -da -da, in Apparition Net Build R65. Okay, one final thing uh, that we've added, not in R65, this has been out for a little while, but uh, I, haven't, I haven't covered this before. So I made a little uh, app net fixer for some basic problems that people run into because everybody complains that we don't respond to them fast enough on AIM. And that is because there's only two people, well, three people now, to actually respond to your AIM messages and there's a lot of them because we have a hell of a lot of customers. So basically what I've done is made a little application to help fix the most common problems that people have with the program which is updating, connecting to console and program crashing. So for example let's say we can't connect to the console and, and one thing you should always do is run this application as administrator otherwise you'll end up getting errors with that as well. So yeah, run it as administrator as it states down here. And so if we can't connect to the console, if you're trying to connect to the console with 
AfferitionNet and it's saying it can't connect to the console or it's freezing when trying to connect to the console and it doesn't unfreeze, it just stays frozen and you have to restart it or something like that, then you can do a little connectivity test here to make sure your plugins and everything are working correctly. We can test connection, click allow on the firewall and let it go past, uh, as you can see. So we let it pass on the firewall and it says XRPC successfully connected. So it checks XRPC first of all to make sure that it's okay. You know, RPC, XRPC, same thing pretty much. Uh, so it ch checks that, make sure that's okay. And you click okay and then it will give you a message saying it's about to test JRPC. If the program freezes uh, during this test, then JRPC is not set, set correctly in dash launch and it must be the 60 kilobyte version and not JRPC2. Uh, one other thing about JRPC that I've noticed is if you have a message box open on the console, um, so if you have like, I don't know, some kind of message box, and I don't mean like uh, party or anything like that, I'm talking an actual message box, like uh, if you use Xbox Live Zone, for example, when you first connect to Xbox Live Zone, you get a little message box saying welcome to Xbox Live Zone, etc. Um, so if you have one of those message boxes open, that can stop JRPC from connecting for some odd reason. So make sure you don't have any message boxes open on your console when you're testing JRPC. And it is finished. So for me, it's successfully connected to the console. So you can use that to tell which plugin is the cause of the problem. If you can't get even XRPC to pass, then it could be that your neighborhood's not connected. Uh, so another uh, common problem is program crashing and as you can immediately see when I opened it I've got an error here saying that could not find part of path blah 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 and the reason it's saying this is I've deliberately did this I went ahead and deleted all the um, stat file folders that it's, it uses to save stat files so obviously it's going to give errors now like I say these are not major problems you can just click the continue button and it will open just fine but if you click quit it will crash the application so you know what you can do here is just scan for issues and what it will do is it will just fill in all the folders and make sure that everything is where it should be to prevent uh, these stat file errors and general uh, index string was outside the bounds of the array or something you know weird errors like that uh, this should just go ahead and sort those out so if you look at it this time it should really auto login back on actually so let's try again we'll open up modern warfare uh, cod 4 and you can see it opens fine this time so little troubleshooter helps with that kind of stuff updating as well as another one where the updater repeats uh, if you basically click scan for issues what it's going to do is it just closes the program and deletes the old app net and runs the updater and when the updater opens, you can just go ahead and download the update. The good thing about our new server is it is quite a bit faster than the old one. My download speed isn't great, but normally on the old server, an update for AppNet took me about 10, about 10 minutes, I would say, to download, which is pretty long, whereas I'm already halfway through this update in, what, less than a minute. So, yeah, we have actually, we're not just saying this, we have actually upgraded the server, so the program should function a little bit faster than it used to. So anyway guys, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and like, uh, leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions. And I will see you guys next time. Yeah.